and remake America, and then we will change the world. I mean, when you study anyone and understand why they do it, you become more sympathetic. When you study Obama, it's hard not to become a fan. I, Barack Hussein Obama, do solemnly swear. The description that Obama led from behind in many ways was true. It, you know, you can't say that he didn't do anything. They certainly did a lot, but the actions that they took, it just wasn't enough to make a difference. I think we got more change than a lot of people thought was possible. There are 20 million more people that are insured in this country than were in 2008. Of course, we're fighting to keep that right now, today, as I talk to you, um, and trying to make sure that people can keep their health care. Um, there has been change in that. There's been change in marriage equality. Um, there's been change all over this country when we think about how marginalized people have been protected. And yet, there is still much more change that needs to happen. You just cannot underestimate how bad um, the, the decks were, how bad the cards he'd inherited in terms of the economy. And nobody ever gets credit. No politician in history ever has gotten credit for averting a disaster. But Obama, the technocrat, the hard-nosed, rational te technocrat um, who passed the largest stimulus in US history and compromised to do it. People forget that. They talk about him you know, unwilling to bend arms, but he did get Republicans to vote for that stimulus, which is why it passed, which is really why there wasn't a second Great Depression. And his first two years in office, he passed more legislation and did more major things, really, than any other progressive um, president has done, really, in living memory. And part of the problem that that caused was that there was a counterattack. Give up and we're gonna fight. We're gonna get rid of him in 2012. But that coalition of less educated, rural um, people who are kind of losers in the globalization game um, is exactly the same coalition that put Donald Trump into the White House. And it's, a, it's just a straight line, you can see it. The Democratic Party at the grassroots has really been decimated under Obama. They've lost most of the state houses, they've lost most of the state legislatures. The party under Obama, in some sense, has hollowed out, and it's going to be very, very hard for them to come back from that. And on January 20th, I will become the first president of the United States to serve two full terms during a time of war. I wouldn't give him a great score on foreign policy. He had two successes, Cuba and Iran. I think they will survive the Trump presidency. But the rest, I, I'm, you know, I worked on a lot of other issues on ISIL, on Syria, on Ukraine, and he wasn't as strong as he could have been on those issues. I would give Obama uh, poor marks, of course, on Syria. I worked on Syria in the State Department for several years, and I think there were several points uh, when had Obama done much more than he did, things really could have changed. He had legitimate reasons for avoiding getting more involved, but unfortunately, you ignore unpleasant parts of the world at your peril. You can't contain a conflict like Syria. So what have we had as a result of Syria? We have ISIL. Uh, and ISIL, by the way, not just in that region, but we've seen attacks in many other countries in Europe as well. We also had the migration crisis. We went into Iraq and it didn't work. We tried persuasion in Egypt and it didn't work. We tried limited intervention in Libya and it didn't work. We didn't intervene in Syria and it didn't work. I mean, really, the person who said, the thing you have to be is lucky, has probably got the answer. If we could just recognize ourselves in one another, bring everybody together, Democrats, Republicans, Independents, 
Latino, Asian, and Native American, black and white, gay and straight, disabled and not. The first time I ever went into the White House um, when President Barack Obama actually lived there, that was the first thing that came to mind, that my ancestors and that my enslaved ancestors built that house, um, that house that for so long we had to enter the back door of, for so long we were not allowed in the dining rooms of, um, let alone in the Oval Office. So for a lot of us, having a black man in the White House um, represented hope. That's not a great legacy on race, but that's not Obama's legacy on race. That's an American legacy on race. If people are tired of hearing about racism, I can guarantee you that we are far more tired of dealing with racism. But at the end of the day, people confuse uh, identifying racism with actual racism. That doesn't mean that race relations have gotten worse. It just means that people have become more aware. I'm asking you to believe not in my ability to bring about change, but in yours. Yes, we can. Yes, we did. Yes, we can. Thank you. God bless you. May God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you.